just want to thank the choir for two excellent selections. Yeah. Yeah. Say good afternoon uh, to everybody. Welcome everybody here to the house of Jacob. Good afternoon, good Brother Daniel. <coughs> and once again, we are gathered on the Sabbath to deal with the Word of God. And we always deal with lessons here. That's what we do. We teach the Bible here. So that is how it's supposed to be done. You know, if you read uh, in Luke, Jesus' custom was to go into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stand up to read. You understand what I'm saying? That is how it's supposed to be done. You know, the singing is good and all of that. But after that, you get down to the main course. And the main course is the word of God because that's the only thing going to save you. So that is what we stress here, that uh, you deal with the Word of God. Get some understanding of the Word of God, and that's what we try and impart to you every time we come before you, to help you to understand what it is that you need to know in order to save yourself. Because trust me, people, the Lord did not have it written in vain that uh, all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God, and it is good for doctrine and for instruction in righteousness. All your instruction got to come from the book. And if they don't come from the book, they are not valid. I tell you that right now. Too long we have gone about with the emotional thing. You know what I'm saying? The singing and the shouting and all of that. Singing I ain't got no problem with, but I ain't never understood the shouting. But if you want to shout, okay. But when you get down to it, what you really going to have to have is the word of God. Amen. That is the only thing that's going to save you. Nothing else is going to save you. I don't care how emotional you get or how good you might feel. If you don't have the word of God when it's all said and done, and not only have some, have it, but walking in it, then you don't have any salvation coming. Now, what we are going to do today, we're going to deal with a lesson today. And I'll tell you this lesson. By his spirits, God operate, be they good or evil. Again, by his spirits, God operate, be they good or evil. You know, uh, we're going to find out, first of all, that, you know, spirits, they're merely angels. That's, that's what I'm dealing with. And you have good angels, and you have evil angels as well. And God used the good angels, and everybody understand that. But what uh, people don't understand, the Lord even used the evil angels as well. And he used the evil angels for an evil occasion, because sometimes the Lord have occasion and he will use an evil angel in order to accomplish his mission that he had. Now, we're going to start this lesson out in Psalms chapter 104, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. Psalm 104 and verse 1. You see, the Lord, he created angels. And when he created angels, he created them upright. But Satan... <coughs> And those that followed him, they chose to become evil. God did not create any, uh, uh, any evil angel. You know, they chose to become evil. Lord, even tell you in the 28th chapter of Ezekiel, you know, how Satan was created upright. But he chose to become evil because he was not pleased with the position that the Lord had put him in. So he decided he was going to usurp the authority of God. He said, I'm going to exalt my throne above the throne of God, and I'm going to be like the Most High. When he was Lucifer, the light barrier, and he was the anointed chair. So that is a high position in itself. When you talk about the anointed chair, you talk about right under uh, the Father and right under Jesus. Right. But he was not pleased with that. He decided he was going to become evil, and he decided he was going to usurp the authority of God. So now that is how he became known as Satan. But initially he was Lucifer, the light bearer. Now we're going to go into Psalms 104, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. Psalm 104, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. And I'm going to just show you uh, uh, 